A pre-Christmas miracle happened near the mouth of South Africa's Chalumna River on December 22, 1938. Marjorie Courtney Latimer, the curator of East London Museum, was on her routine visit to the docks. She was checking if there were any unusual catches from local fishermen. Suddenly, she spotted a strange fin sticking out of a pile of discarded fish. Intrigued, she cleaned off the slime to reveal an incredible discovery. A pale blue fish with silvery flecks, thin scales, and four fins that looked almost like limbs. And it was huge too, five feet long, weighing about 127 pounds. Marjorie actually specialized in birds, but she had always been fascinated by the natural world, including the ocean. She didn't know what the fish was, but she had a feeling that it was something special. So she had the fish loaded into a taxi and taken to her museum. She then went through lots of reference books, but no matter how hard Marjorie tried, she couldn't identify the species. She decided to show it to the chairman of the museum's board, but he just dismissed it as a common rock cod. Marjorie didn't listen to him. The creature fascinated her so much that she kept studying it and even tried to preserve it by having it taxidermy, although she couldn't save the organs. Desperate for answers, she reached out to a fish expert, J. L. B. Smith. But tough luck, he was away at that moment. When Smith finally saw the drawing, he got instantly intrigued. By January, he finally wrote the response to Marjorie, saying the fish was giving him sleepless nights. He was eager to see it in person. On February 16, when he finally arrived at the museum and laid eyes on the fish, he was stunned. Suddenly, it dawned on him that he was looking at a coelacanth, a species believed to have gone extinct 66 million years ago. This made it a Lazarus species, an extinct species that reappears after a long absence in the fossil record. It was like seeing a fossil come to life. Scientists thought that this creature had vanished with the dinosaurs. Thanks to Marjorie's persistence, this became one of the most remarkable biological finds of the 20th century. The entire genus Latimeria was named in her honor. Turns out, Fish was vibing in the deep ocean waters, completely unbothered by an asteroid strike for millions of years. Today, at least two species of coelacanth are known to exist. Both come from this ancient lineage that survived the test of time. They mostly live in the Indian Ocean, with some chilling around Indonesia here and there. Coelacanths look and behave very differently from other fish. Their creepy fins actually move in a way similar to how human arms and legs move. They also have a special joint in their skull that lets them raise a part of their head while feeding. That's because they're related to tetrapods, those guys that were the first to step out of the waters to the land. Michael Smith is a British naturalist. On July 2018, he was exploring the remote Wandiwoi mountain range in Papua, Indonesia. He was there to search for rare, pretty flowers called rhododendrons, but he accidentally took a photo of a funky-looking creature. Smith got very curious about this animal. He then returned for another expedition, this time with a local guide. He spent 10 tough days searching high in the mountains. The terrain was harsh, with constant rain, slippery ground, and leeches crawling into their boots. When they were already exhausted and close to giving up, the miracle happened. The team finally spotted and snapped a picture of the animal. This cute thing turned out to be the Wandiwoi tree kangaroo, the one thought to be extinct for 90 years. The first time it was discovered was 1928. It's a sad story. A biologist spotted it while studying the area, and this was the first and the last time we saw that animal. But as it turned out, it wasn't extinct at all. It's just a very elusive and sneaky creature. This marsupial lives in small, isolated, steep and misty forests. Very few people venture there, all because of the reasons we mentioned. The rugged terrain, dense bamboo thickets, lack of water, even the local hunters had never seen one. They're super cute with their round face, reddish fur and appearance that looks like a mix of a monkey and a bear. It's a weird type of kangaroo that jumps on the trees, not the land. 
When Michael Smith rediscovered it, he immediately contacted experts, including a specialist on tree kangaroos. The discovery was confirmed. Even though it's still hard to catch these creatures in the wild, they're still a mystery to science, and scientists try to protect the species. In 1996, researchers from the Wildlife Conservation Society were walking around the meat market in Thakek, Laos. Suddenly, they spotted a bunch of weird rats. Yeah, it may seem to be a common thing for a market, but those were no simple rats at all. At first, they thought it was a new species. They called this new rodent the Laotian rock rat. This animal was so different from other rodents that biologists wanted to place it in its own family. But in 2006, Mary Dawson and her team challenged this idea. They suggested that the Laotian rock rat might actually belong to an ancient family of rodents, the ones that were believed to have been extinct for 11 million years. In the same year, scientists finally captured and documented a live specimen. And guess what? Those were indeed those ancient rats. They didn't go extinct. They just preferred to avoid the spotlight and decided to go vibe in the limestone karsts of Laos and a small part of Vietnam. Turns out, the locals were even familiar with the rodent, regularly trapping it for food. Right, that must be the true reason for their hermit lifestyle. Now, these guys are a huge interest for scientists and are being studied carefully. In 2019, some scientists went on a joint expedition on Fernandina Island in the Galapagos Archipelago. During the expedition, the team started noticing weird things – tracks, scat, and claw marks on trees. By following them, they suddenly discovered the culprit – a mysterious turtle that was sitting on a high elevation on the volcanic island. It was a lone female tortoise. They nicknamed her Fernanda. That's because they recognized her as a Fernandina giant tortoise, a species that was thought to have been extinct for 112 years. The last time we've ever seen this species was in 1906, when scientists found a male tortoise and sent it to the California Academy of Sciences. They thought that volcanic eruptions and extensive hunting caused the species to completely disappear. This was a huge deal. It provided hope for the survival of the Fernandina giant tortoise. Park rangers said that they saw signs of at least two other tortoises, so maybe they'll be able to find them soon. The Galapagos Conservancy has launched fundraising efforts to support further expeditions. In July of 2007, Luis Enrique Minguez was hiking in La Palma, a small island in the Canary Islands. He's a researcher in the Institute of Ecology and Conservation. While he was walking through the northeastern part of the island, he spotted an interesting lizard. The lizard was almost 12 inches long. He saw it near a forest trail, about 147 feet above sea level. Minguez took a photo of the lizard and shared it with his buddy researchers. After seeing the pictures, they realized that it was the long-lost La Palma giant lizard. This species was presumed to be extinct for centuries. They thought that it disappeared within the last 500 years due to being hunted by cats and habitat destruction. Unfortunately, even though they were super hyped up at first, things didn't go so well next time. They did some follow-up expeditions in October of 2007, and then some more. But they couldn't spot the lizard anywhere again since then. The lizard probably lived in very high and dry spots of the island. Researchers hope to discover at least some of the lizards in the future and help them thrive once again. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.